This lesson is about combining velocities. When we talk about the speed of things, we're talking about how fast. When we talk about the velocity of things, we're talking about how fast and in which direction. That's because velocity is a vector quantity, a quantity describing how much and which way. Let's combine the velocities for an airplane flying in wind. Consider this airplane flying at 100 kilometers per hour, say, due north. Our vector, drawn to scale, represents 100 kilometers per hour. Suppose it's flying against a headwind, say, of 20 kilometers per hour, due south. When we combine these velocities, they simply subtract and the plane flies north at a resultant velocity of 80 kilometers per hour. Consider our same 100 kilometer per hour airplane, this time flying with a tailwind, blowing at 20 kilometers per hour due north. Now the airplane travels across the ground with a resultant velocity of 120 kilometers per hour. So vectors in the same direction along the same line add. Vectors in opposite directions subtract. To combine these velocities, do we really need vectors? The answer is no. Simple arithmetic is fine enough. But suppose the airplane is flying in a crosswind then vectors are essential. Let's drop in on my conceptual physics class where I introduce a pair of velocity vectors at right angles to each other. And let's suppose the wind is a crosswind coming like this, just as fast as you're going. Let's suppose you're going 100 kilometers per hour, and you're in a hurricane, and the hurricane's coming like this at 100 kilometers per hour. What's the direction of the aircraft going to be? It's kind of easy to see, isn't it? Huh? It's kind of going like this. It's kind of going like this at the same time, right? And so what it does is it kind of goes off course like this, huh? Let me give you a neat little rule. We'll tell you exactly which way and how fast it goes. And the little rule is this. Take your two vectors, one representing ground speed or the speed through the air, huh? and the other representing the speed of the wind, and make those into a parallelogram. Since they're at right angles here, that parallelogram is going to be, uh, in this case, a square, because the sides are equal. Make a square. <coughs> and then what you do is you join from here to the diagonal, and you make a vector like that. And guess what, gang? Guess what? That's the direction that the aircraft will travel. And furthermore, it tells you how fast it's going to travel. Because if this is 100, and this is 100, and that's a 45 degree angle, and it would be for both 100, yeah? It turns out, so this will be, this will be the square root of 2 times 100, something like 140. So you'd be going something like 140 kilometers per hour that way. Isn't it kind of neat? Let's suppose instead the wind weren't so strong. Let's suppose you're traveling like this, and you got a crosswind about like that. Now, at your seats there, you guys taking notes, yeah? At your seats, draw this. And what I'm going to do in a minute, in a minute, I'm going to go ahead and draw the solution. And you guys are going to look. But why don't you beat me to it? Why don't you draw what I'm going to do next to show sort of this thing here, but the angle is different, yeah? Why don't you do it before I do it? Go. Which is to say, you'll make a little rectangle, yeah? <coughs> See how now this is a rectangle? And what's the diagonal of that re rectangle represent, gang? That's right. Now you'll be blown off course only that much. And you know what? If you had a ruler and you did this to scale, you could measure that compared to this, and you could tell how fast you're going to go. Because the velocities will add together in that vector way. Really kind of neat. Back to our screencast. What about wind at angles other than 90 degrees? Let's see. Here we have three planes moving, say, north. Let's put a vector for their direction. This would be their ground speeds. Their ground speeds with no wind. But what's the resultant velocity if there is a wind? Well, let's suppose in the first case over here, we have a wind, say, something like this. 
let's draw a parallelogram and see how that goes. Maybe something like this, huh? That look good? No, that does not look good. It's not a parallelogram. We want the side here to be parallel to here. So we come up and we do something like this. That looks better. Now we get the resultant of this parallelogram and that'll give us the velocity that the plane travels. So it goes off to the side a little bit and up and see it's gained speed. The wind is moving, has a component upward, the plane gains speed. Let's suppose the airplane now has a crosswind of something like this. That's maybe a little against, almost sideways, but a little bit against. Well, let's see what our parallelogram tells us. I'll make one like that and maybe something like, like this. Come on, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> the parallelogram has got to be, the side of the parallelogram has got to be parallel to that vector as such. So we get something like that. And the resultant of that is going to be as such. So the airplane now goes more off course toward the right. Huh? Suppose the wind blows in this direction. Again, we construct a parallelogram. And we see that the plane travels in this direction, faster across the ground below. Its velocity is greater in this direction than in the other two cases. Yum? I hope so. Let me leave you with a question that picks up on what I covered in the classroom video. Suppose our airplane with a normal ground speed of 100 kilometers per hour is caught in a storm where it encounters a 90 degree crosswind also of 100 kilometers per hour. How fast will the airplane travel across the ground below? And another question. If the airplane changes course and flies directly into the 100 km per hour wind, what will its speed relative to the ground then be? Got that? Until next time, good energy.